Essential was a one-phone company with the Essential PH1, better known as the Essential Phone. I say was because in 2017 they launched this phone with some extremely difficult accessories, and then in 2020 they went defunct, ironically before a global pandemic got the chance to dig into the company. That month was February, and was the last software this phone ever received. But the point of this video is not to turn you away from this cheap old flagship, but instead I will let you know what it's like using this phone and why you would want to buy the Essential Phone in 2022. Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real World Review. Let's get started with the video. You know what to do with the socials above. And now, let's talk about this relic. And a relic this phone is. I actually remember buying this phone in 2018 and being disappointed by this phone. But they did have a decent warranty giving me a new phone because of a broken screen, something I'm indifferent with seeing that they are no longer a company. Anyways, let's talk about that controversial screen. It is a flat 5.71 inch IPS LCD screen with technically a 2K display at 1312 by 2560, giving us 504 pixels per inch. This was paired with 500 nits of brightness, a nice chin at the bottom, and an often forgotten LED light for notifications on the top. Of course, we get this little notch that featured a fixed focus 8 megapixel camera capable of 4K video with the light sensors right above that. Now the screen is good ish. LCD is never fun because black colors look washed out, but on this phone everything looks like the brightness was set to 120%. To me, everything looks washed out and that 60Hz refresh rate does not help. Sure, it wasn't that big of a deal at launch, but compared to phones today, it makes a phone feel very laggy. I'm not experiencing touch issues on this one, but it was a common issue to the point that Essential added a sensitivity adjuster in the developer settings. This is all powered by a 3040 milliamp battery, strange number, and the Snapdragon 835 chip, which is paired with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of UFS 2.1 storage. On paper, not the worst, but today it struggles. The battery life isn't that bad for what I use it for, but my phone isn't really in the worst condition, so it's possible that if you buy a used one, your battery life might be pretty bad, or even worse, pushing up the screen because the battery needs to be replaced which was a common theme. While the charger supplied is a 27 watt one, getting anything past 14 watts is either difficult or not possible, at least in my test. Still, it does seem like it charges pretty fast, going about 60% in one hour, which is not fast, but compared to old phones, it's pretty fast. Even with this glass, I mean ceramic back, no wireless charging is in this phone. As for the chip that they used in this phone, it isn't that bad, but the benchmarks today are terrible, with graphic performance in games being lackluster. I never had an issue with RAM, ironically, and the 128GB of storage is still a decent amount of storage, so that's good for audio and video, the former that is half-baked because of the lack of the headset jack. Essential does, however, give you a headset jack adapter in the box. As for the size and the materials, the phone is a fairly compact device with some heft. The 185 grams is thanks to that apparently heavy ceramic back in titanium frame, but it looks really nice. I do have the halo gray version, while the most common color is a glossy black moon. I would love to have the almost impossible to find ocean depths color. Speaking of, the phone is IP54 water resistant, and given the age, as well as how weak that claim is already, don't put this anywhere near liquid. On the back we have an almost logo where the camera flash and autofocusing unit is, a microphone in the middle, and two pogo pins for that 360 camera and the impossible to get HD audio adapter. Oh wait, you can buy it. Below that is a fingerprint reader. I did have to fix mine because for some reason it did fail. It works fine, faster than my Pixel 6 Pro, which is kind of funny. On the sides we get volume and power buttons, nice and clicky, while the left and the top are just antenna lines. The bottom is where the single SIM card tray is, and apparently there's two microphones down here, totaling three microphones on the phone, and allegedly that last one is in the loudspeaker area. And the USB-C 3.0 port is in the middle. Yes, the only loudspeaker, as the top slit is just for phone calls. The quality is not the best, and it's jarring when watching landscape video. It's good for horizontal usage or listening to people talk, like in podcasts or in my videos. And that's about it. As I told you before, there is no headset jack, which this was kind of the start of that becoming a norm, but like I said before, it's weird to not have one in an essential phone. Surprise to me, I'm giving this camera section its own section, but don't worry, it's pretty short. 
because just like the Moto Z2 Force, it's just two cameras on the back. Those two sensors on the rear are both 13 megapixel sensors, one being a usable sensor while the other one is a black and white sensor, neither featuring optical image stabilization. The shots that come out of this were nothing special in 2017, and in 2022, it's pretty much the same. The black and white sensor is useless because of filters. Instead, it's supposed to be used for low light images, but still doesn't really help that much. The app is somewhat confusing, but it's okay because, like I said, the shots aren't anything special. The video is decent, but with a lack of optical image stabilization, it's very obvious that it's not going to be a stable video. This shoots at 4K at 30 frames per second, and so does the front camera. It's a surprising twist seeing that it is an 8 megapixel sensor, because technically you need 8.7 megapixels for 4K video. Regardless, it does shoot 4K, and of course shots are going to be alright on this camera, nothing to write home about. Ultimately, it's possible to get decent shots out of these cameras, but that's not what people buy this phone for. The question I asked myself after setting up this phone for the third time is why would anyone want this phone? Well, first off, the best part of this phone is the design. You show this or the white one to someone, and immediately they wonder what this phone is all about. And that's one of the two groups that you should be in if you want to buy this phone the fake rich. Similar to a nice looking watch, this is a casual device that doesn't really look like any other phone on the market, and almost no one will know what it is. Similar to wearing a Rolex, I know, a bold claim, it shows sign of class, even though it's nowhere near that. The other reason is that these phones are cheap burner phones or vacation phones. Sure, you can get the Palm phone, but the performance and usability is much better on this phone, and in most cases, cheaper just as long as you stay away from Amazon. I still love the design of the phone, and actually using it doesn't bother me that much. The fragile screen and plastic trim is something to worry about, but overall, it's still a pretty decent buy. And even if you're stuck with that horrible company called AT&T, or any sub-providers of them like H2O or Cricut, they will still support this phone, and every version you can buy is unlocked. Pair that with a sub-$100 price, and you have a decent device. Or just buy one with a cracked screen, and I'll show you how to fix that. At the end of the day, I don't think that this phone is worth the purchase in 2022. Sure, the price is nice, but as a daily driver, you're going to be missing out on a lot of features, and if you add a couple dollars to that, you can get something that will last you a long time, like an S10 era device. I mean, the notch interrupts your videos, and the speaker doesn't really sound that good anyway. This is a good phone for calls and text, and that's about it. By the way, that vibrating mechanism is horribly annoying. And that's my review of the Essential Phone. The non-Essential Phone. Wait, I did that last year. How about the Not-So-Awesome Phone? But what do you think? Talk about it in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.